okay so the next thing that we are going to learn is connector so connectors are something that we use to consume the services provided by a different application okay it could be for um, getting some information from the other application it could be posting some information or pushing some information to the other applications right and it can be of different different protocol it can be of rest soap right whatever the end application supports we are relying on the end application that we are consuming the provider if provider supports rest we got to use rest provider supports soap we got to use soap so um there are two ways of developing connector one of course the advanced way you configure the connector and all the request and response classes uh, manually yourself that way you optimize you can optimize the class creation and data model creation and everything and the easy way is to use um, use a con um, wizard wizard to configure a connector okay so in this uh, session we are going to cover um, how to create a rest connector with the wizard so i have um, so i have this website or this url which we can leverage to get customer information a second right so there is um, this url that's what we will be leveraging to get the customer information okay id is the customer id employee id sorry not customer information but the employee id so let's use this url to develop a rest connector in pega so go to the configure integration connector create rest integration okay this is this will launch the wizard for creating the rest integration and actually this wizard will set up every infrastructure you need including the integration classes data model and probably create the data page as well to consume it so we will say get employee that's the name of the integration uh, url is going to be this now in this url this one is going to be the query Okay, this is fine. One string. Okay, this is going to be the ID, employee ID. We don't need any authentication. Okay, if I add it here itself, ID and just say, okay, yeah, I don't need. So this will be something that we need to pass dynamically. So we have the ID, employee ID. Okay, you can say imp ID, but this is this makes sense. After employee, it's going to be employee ID only. So I have parameterized this. This is a parameter that will pass at the runtime. So if we pass employee ID one, then employee ID one's data will be uh, basically given to us. So this is the first screen. We don't have any other query parameters. Right, that will usually usually how we process per query parameter. This is like a, a date or st I mean, start date equal to. This is how you process the parameter. Okay, in the URL, but we don't have such requirement. We only need ID, and that has to be provided in this format. Okay. So this is parameter. I will remove this stage and let's click on the next. Now this is guest get method resource name. This doesn't have any query string parameter and it doesn't have any header. That's fine. Let's just continue. Do you have any sample response? You can click on add rest response. So just run it with an ID and Pega will get the response and accordingly create the data model for it. Okay, you don't have to create manually. So one, run it. So 
second. We run it again sometime. Yeah, see, so it got the response. Okay, I can use this. Or Pega will use this information to configure your request and this I mean response data model and response property. Submit. So it will create the data model for response automatically. Next. So see um, integration class get IM. I can say so this is going to be integration class okay in the int class this is the connector name get employee detail okay um, the data layer this is going to be created in the CB data get employee I will say just employee okay I can rename it to employee as well yeah dealing with the employee so this is the data model that will be created this is the data page that will be created which will have the integration set up automatically and let's create it you can do this manually as well you can select a script I'll do it later and then create the data um, model and data page yourself by consuming the connector but this one is the ready-made way this is the fastest way of creating an integration and if you do not have something to be reused this is the way we should be using it for the first time when we are setting up and we don't have any reusable component we can use the wizard to create it everything will be set up you can reuse certain aspect as well here so see this is the integration class that got created this is the data class that got created this is the rule set a new rule set gets created as well for the integration um, and um, this is the data source and this is the data page that got created. If you open this data page, <coughs> so this has connector, see, REST connector, right? This has a request data transform that will translate the parameter ID and put it there on the request page. And this is going to, the data transform, data page already has a parameter. Pega creates everything that otherwise you will, will create manually okay using wizard if you run this employee one successfully right um, look at the data employee age name salary right if i run it for the employee two sorry second okay so see this is the different employee with different salary different name right so that's the out of the box um, not out of the box but this is the way we create integration very fast in pega I mean all you need just the URL and rest of the and a test ID test in this case test employee ID to fetch the data so that Pia, uh, pega can leverage that response to create the data model and everything if you look here in the classes let's just in uh, have a look at the class a little bit to understand how things are done so in this class there this is this is the class uh, which got created basically for the api connector okay expand this integration you have connector right this is the connector rule that got created for this um, this API integration. Along with that, you will see some request and response. Uh, so see, this is the request get employee API request class, which will have other uh, properties related to the request. So see, ID is the parameter that we will take from the clipboard and map it to the request dot ID. Now, if you look at the request request is a page property that got created and it has a class definition of employee get uh, api detail request so this is the class definition that class created for the request and this should have all the information that is needed only id for the moment and id is something that we have already created similarly we have a response data page created now response data page is of this class so this is 
this is the response database class get employee detail okay and this also has property so this has a data property okay page property which has definition of this class so within the same class you can have multiple uh, classes employee we have multiple classes and then we are using those classes as a page definition for individual properties wherever we need it okay so let's go back to the connector all right so if you go into the method we use um, get method and look at the response so whatever is coming that is coming as a json we are mapping that directly to the response dot get property now response underscore get this is the property and this has this definition and of course internally it is um, this page the response get page has another page data that has the individual property and it has a status all right now um, <clears throat> this information is available there if you go back to the data page this is now being translated transformed from the integer in uh, from int class to the data model class that was created to hold the employee information now this is data right so this response parameter the data transform is reading from the response and then it is updating the data class putting the uh, basically salary name and everything in the data class okay all right so this is the end to end process of creating a integration using wizard for the rest okay now you can use this data page on your screen too you you guys remember you have you are asking them to provide a customer id and then uh, you are getting the data from the table instead of getting the table data from table you can get the data from api mm -hmm. if it is in the difference exact same way you will use this data page now and you will um, enter the employee id one or two or three or whatever it is and get the information from the api so this is the standard use case you can leverage this data page wherever you need to have employee data fetched based on the employee id all right so that's how an api uh, basically a rest connector is created in pega using wizard